A very interesting comparison you wanted to see. BMW 3 Series against BMW 5 Series. The business sedans, mid-size and full-size. And we start here with the 3 Series, recently facelifted. You can see there is this better transition from the grille to the headlamps. And also this BMW Double Kin, it has a stronger shark nose here when you look at it from the side. In this case, in the black styling, you can also get a bright styling. This is also the M Sport Pack. That means we have a sporty accentuation here in the lower part. And indeed, the 5 Series has also been facelifted. It's a little bit longer ago, but not too old. And there also, they made this same transition from the headlamps to the front grille. Looks sporty, looks sleeker in this case, and they don't look too different. However, the 3 Series, a little bit sportier. This one here, a little bit more maybe a little bit more subtle, a little bit more grown up. This one is not the M Sport Pack, but still we have quite some sport accentuations in the lower part. The colors here, very interesting. Blue stone metallic here for this, it's a gray, but they call it blue stone. And this one here is called Melbourne Red, very strong. So what it is for you, the red pill or the blue stone pill? Length comparison? Yeah, I know you've been waiting for this. Gotcha. <laughs> 4 meters 71 or 185 inches for the 3 series. And here the 5 series is 21 centimeters or 10 inches longer. That's this black, black area here. <laughs> so um, it is a notable difference when parking in and out. However, for the 5 series, you can get the rear axle steering and that steers the rear wheels in the opposite direction than the front wheels and making up for that wheelbase difference indeed. Styling wise, I mean the 3 Series has a little bit more dynamic character, doesn't it? Here with 18 inch wheels, winter tires, therefore they look a little bit bigger the tires and also blacked out high gloss frames around. You can get different stylings, you know, a base, normal plain black or also this chrome style. So depending on what you like, and of course, you can also get the brighter wheels if you like here, the M Sport colors here once again. Yeah, it just looks a little bit sleeker. The 5 Series looks a little bit bigger, more this, hey, I'm a grown-up sedan, also with 18-inch winter tires here in this case, because it's a winter here already than in Germany, too bad. We also have the black frames around here today, so they both have sportiness. Also, you can see here the dropping line dividing in light and shadow, but definitely, yeah, especially in side profile, the 3 Series just gives a little bit more sportiness. Adaptive suspension is available for both, Oh, and have you seen that? Here the blue brake calipers behind the black wheels. That's a nice design element, isn't it? Very interesting also the rear comparison. They have some similarities, but they're also a little bit different. The 5 Series here, since the update, also has more modern tail lamps here, three-dimensional style, more horizontally drawn. This area is just a little bit higher, and the 3 Series just has more dynamic appearance. Once again, they're also in the rear especially with the M Sport Pack. See here lower black contrast and also then here this upper lip you can also get optionally, you don't have to go for it. It just has more dynamic character, period, indeed. And also here with the tail lamps, very beautifully done here with that signature. Which one would you go for if you would just look at the rear perspective? Would be really looking forward to that. Have you seen the number plate, by the way? MPD, MPD! Freeze! <laughs> yeah, M of course for Munich. That's where the BMW headquarters is. And turning indicators actually look quite similar, both with the 5 Series here and with the 3 Series. And in the front, they replace a part of the data mining light each, but they have different signatures. Therefore, it looks actually interesting how different it is. Let's start with the interior. 3 Series, well, the car keys, they do not really differ, but does the door closing sound? That's okay for the 3 Series, but not too good, actually. Then inside of the doors here, soft touch materials here and here. Overall good build quality, also here with the window levers and so on. And then look at that, also here the M Sport steering wheel, for example. You can see it here. And you still have real knobs on the steering wheel, so that's not really a differentiation between 3 Series and 5 Series. What's big news is since the facelift of the 3 Series here, you have this one unit screen, so to speak. 
There are two separate screens, but it appears that it would be one curved screen unit. This is a big difference also as for the software. Seats here, animal skin in the 3 Series, which we see right now, but there are also perforated Sensitec seats available and they deliver more comfort and also better breathability, actually. And with the seating position, the first big difference is with the 3 Series versus the 5 Series here. The seats are a little bit smaller, narrower, stiffer, sportier, especially stiff with the animal skin surface. And you just have less seating comfort here in the 3 Series. Headroom here with 1 meters 89 or 6 foot 2, you still have enough headroom. This is the one without the panoramic roof, you can get one. However, just how you sit, you feel more caged in. Steering wheel up and down, in and out, nice, smooth, and so on. And you of course get long, but neither in this mid-size segment nor in the comparison three versus five shoes here internally is the seating comfort at best. So this is already scoring once for the five series. We'll soon see that and also tell you more about the seating right there. Again, it's okay. But I would say not ideal. I think they have to work on the seat ergonomics here for the 3 Series. Interior overview, really clean. Also here with this new curved screen setup in the facelift. The cost of that is losing manual climate diets. You don't have them here, whereas in the 5 Series you still have them. Yet, of course, it will change in the future, I guess. And here you control the climate unit then inside the screen. It stays in the same place, so it's not too hard. But still, I would prefer the old school way. You still have a manual volume knob, at least. Here in the lower part, you can get different deco elements. Here also cool that you don't always have the high gloss black. Then you can slide this one here open, have inductive charging pad for your smartphone and adaptive cup holders. And what's really cool here that we still have this turning knob here. So we can control something in the infotainment system while driving. Good to still have that. The shifting lever here in the facelift has become smaller, so not a real thing, I would call it. It's cleaner, but also looks less sporty. Or oh, what's your take on that? And here, there's the driving mode selection. And finally, also some space underneath the armrest here, USB-C charging as well. Quite well usable. Infotainment system, OS 8. And that means you have a new visualization of everything. The system itself is also faster. Um, so that's the advantage. It has more functionalities. That's another advantage. However, some things are more complicated because you have just more things. And for example, to get to the consumption thing, um, uh, it takes more steps at, at, at some point and it's more hidden in the menu. So really nice that they have the red color here also visualized in the interior. So I'm not the biggest fan of the OS 8 system. The OS 7 is just easier to control, has better overview. The only thing that could be an advantage here, the Apple CarPlay integration or Android Auto, both wireless. Here in the OS 8, it seems to be more stable. In the OS 7, at some point you lose connection and have to reconnect it. So this seems to have improved now. This vehicle, by the way, has the Harman Kardon sound system and this gives you indeed a really good sound already in this segment. Digital instruments, this is like the home screen, idle screen, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and then we go here with left side the speed and right side the RPM. You can also adjust that. So um, this is actually a quite nice layout with the speed in the middle. You can also have different layouts here overall. I really prefer the yeah this one, the sporty simplified one. And you can also change the contents, have the speed somewhere else. You can also have the Apple Maps from the CarPlay here, not only the car internal GPS. If you use Apple Maps, you can also have it here on the left side now. So this is possible with OS 8 and um, Google Maps when you have the Android Auto. This is like the, you know, that these two combinations are possible. The optional head display is very well visible, also has this golden frame. Inside of the doors at the rear, also soft touch here, that's nice, not that often actually. And then you can see here, yeah, where you have black seats, it's all blacked out, it's really dark in there. And also this big tunnel here, big metal tunnel, because you have rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, of course. Oh, what's really nice are these contrasting colors here. They are, of course, not standard, but really nice here at the seat belts, aren't they? Sitting in the rear in the 3 Series is a problem when a tall driver is driving. So I would need to put the seat a little bit more up. 
curb or something, right? And then the recess here at the back part of the seat fits better. So then it works for four tall adults, but barely. Headroom also works here with my size, even if I put my spine up. Barely, I do touch the seating with my hair, but yeah, it still somewhat works. Not the best comfort here in the rear, but it's okay. In the middle part, it's even stiffer, big tunnel, and also this middle seating area here. You can live with that for short trips. Here you also have two USB C chargers in the rear. Rear area of the 5 Series, instead of the door, nice soft materials here, um, so it's also very well executed. But when you take a look at here, hmm, does the longer length, do you say longer length, also transport into more legroom here in the rear? You know, it was 25 centimeters or 10 inches long on the exterior, and legroom wise, not at all. So um, the shoulder area here is even a little bit slimmer. So I would not say that we have more space in the 5 Series in the rear. That's an astonishing result. So indeed, the plus in length goes into the trunk and also into the front hood because this one can also house the 8-cylinder engines. It is very comfortable here in the rear when the legs are not too tall or too long. And of course, this is the seat as I would be driving with 189 or 6 foot 2. Headroom is no problem. That I would say is a little bit better here in the 5 series than, than with the 3 series. But you can hardly move around here. And also, if you want to go to the middle part here, yeah, this is really close. So um, indeed, you don't go for the 5 series to get more leg room. You can guess which key to which vehicle. I'll give you a hint. Yeah, you can see this is from the 3 Series because this one has the M Sportback. Interesting, right? <laughs> and door closing sound with the 5 Series. Let's take a look or let's take a here. Oh, this is better. So indeed, the 5 Series has the better door closing sound, but also not the best one, I really have to admit. Then here, oh, dun, 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 because the light is on. So there we go. Here, instead of the doors, also soft touch. This styling is a little bit more old school than with the 3 Series, but overall also nice and good. Steering wheel here, the M styling. Nice that you can always easily activate the heated steering wheel here when you went for that option, actually. And then the seats, in this case also animal skin, but as I said, perforated sensor tags are available both for 3 and 5 Series. And it's really a great surface. Soft brings more comfort is also breathable so i really recommend to get that and it's also now standard in most markets indeed but very interesting here now is the seating comfort when i get inside the 3 series you remember i was not that satisfied but here with the 5 series it's really good comfort uh, when you by the way start the engine or the ignition then the steering wheel comes down as a comfort feature and yeah that's six cylinder though right Brum, brum, brum. That's a nice sound. <laughs> and here, headroom, plenty, no problem. There's also panoramic roof available if you like one. This is a crucial thing in the comparison. 3 Series versus 5 Series. Or BMW 3er gegen BMW 5er, as we say in Germany. Listen and repeat. BMW 3er gegen BMW 5er. I'll repeat it one more time in the driving part. It has just more comfort here in the front. So front seat comfort here, definitely goes for the 5 Series. Interior overview, a little bit more old school here in the 5 Series. You have the separated screen area here, a little bigger since the facelift, but definitely very important still manual climate dials. I really love that we soon take a deep look at that. Steering wheel in an electric way here and the user interface is a little bit more simple and also for example here the real shifting lever. Oh, I love that. I prefer that in comparison to the smaller one. What's your take on that? Here, one more close-up. It's just easier to control this while driving. You have this digital animation here and the vent strength, but at least the temperature can be controlled like this. And while driving, that's still easier. Here in the front, by the way, slide this one open. The inductive charging area is kind of slim. Um, it does still fit here with the iPhone 14. Pro that does still fit a max or plus or how they call it nowadays I don't get it um, doesn't really fit adaptive cup holders 
And then you have here this split armrest, very really beautiful solution with USB-C charging and some more space. Digital instruments, not as adjustable as in the OS8. Here only the car internal GPS goes in the middle part and it adjusts also to the driving modes. In the sport mode, for example, we have then the RPM here on the right side. Brum, brum. And head-up display is also an option here for the 5 Series. OS 7 still here for the 5 Series and to me it has a better overview, especially here. And I can also access here the car, like the car information, um, like journey data, um, consumption and so on. This is to me an easier solution. I think it's also quite responsive and just has less clutter to it. Some drawbacks that, for example, in the CarPlay, by the way, you can also control it from below with the control knob. In the CarPlay, you cannot get the maps to the left side instruments. That's only um, possible then in the OS 8. However, here, sound system, also with the Harman Kardon, the optional one, has a nice true sound to it. So both in both good in both systems. The thing is here really with the um, OS 7, less functionality, but also better overview in the OS 8. It can do more, but it also has then less overview. One disadvantage here with the OS 7, sometimes the wireless connection to the phone, maybe a week or so it works well, and then there you have a day where the wireless connection is maybe not that good, um, so I don't get it sometimes. And we can also take a look at the trunk comparison because on paper the 5 series has a big advantage trunk wise but how is it then practically in reality so the width here in the 3 series trunk or boot is a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches but overall quite square dimensions and the length is kind of exactly a meter or 40 inches height here is 55 centimeter or 21 inches you can see here this cabin trolley also easily fits in, in a vertical way. So on paper it's smaller, but you can see it is very well usable. And now the 5 Series with basically the same height. What interesting is now, as for the length, this is here a meter of 40 inches as it was in the 3 Series. So this is here what you gain in length in the trunk in the 5 Series. Now then here at yeah, about 115 or 45 inches. As for the width, however, you can see, um, yeah, it's even a little bit less here. It's, let's say, a little bit more complicated here. So the leader figures rather come from the extra in length than here with this vehicle. So both are almost equally usable. You can also fold the seats from here. You have to go over and fold it right there. This is a similar system in both vehicles. But I wouldn't say the trunk is not the big difference. Yes, a little bit more length. But yeah, that's not the crucial thing. And now what about the engines? <laughs> okay, back to the review. So what we have here today, interesting is that both four and six cylinders are available for three series and five series. Eight cylinder for the five series exclusively petrol and diesel engines available plug-in hybrid as well and we picked the engines for today which are let's say most popular for each car 330i here is the two liter four cylinder available as rear wheel drive or all wheel drive we have the rear wheel drive version here today this is one of the most picked engines worldwide indeed this one here 258 horsepower and around six seconds in the acceleration figure here second legs around five seconds in the acceleration figure for the 540i this one is the inline six cylinder, three liter, around 340 horsepower. It's also quite popular with this vehicle especially, but you can also go with a smaller engine, it's possible. Here in the US market, also rear drive possible. Other than that, an X drive, the all wheel drive, we have it here today. But even if you go all wheel drive with this model, you still have a rear wheel bias. The same would be for the three series. Well, if we would have gone with the six cylinder for the three series, it would have been the M340i, but then we would have needed the M550i with the eight cylinder for the five series. Um, so M550i and M5 have the eight cylinder here on the five series. So I think this comparison is very fair because these are the right sized engines and the most popular engines for each version. Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, BMW 3 Series versus BMW 5 Series, 3er gegen 5er, as we would say 
in German. <laughs> so we put it to sports mode. Ooh, we have different sports layout then, different visualizations. Going to the German Autobahn and high speed test. We start at 40 kilometers an hour. Let another car pass. Yeah, just to be safe. No one interferes with us, and I don't interfere with anyone right there. So from 40 kilometers an hour, let's go. Almost 200 kilometers an hour, we're blocked right here. Okay, here we go again. M adaptive suspension in here. Left, wow. Really good contact to the road, super stable at higher speeds. Noise insulation is also decent, but wind noise are of course picking up at that speed here. Feel that is also a little bit louder than in the 5 series. We will also experience or compare that later. Wow, but this feels so sporty, you, of course, with the M Sport Pack. But even if you would have the normal suspension, the 3 Series in general has a sportier feeling than the 5 Series. That's already clear right now. Another lane change right here. And we can also switch it back to the comfort mode. Whew. Yeah, that was something. So, indeed, the 3 Series is more the driver-focused vehicle. It tells you and especially when you have M Sport Pack, let's go attack. I also feed it from the seating position here. The seats they are also way stiffer. Note then when you go for the perforated sensitive seats with both vehicles they will deliver more comfort. They are more soft in the very surface. So this is something you have to consider. Here once again with the animals animals can see this the surface is just stiffer and delivers less comfort here in the tunnel. Yeah, I feel that would be louder than in the 5 Series. We'll also compare it then when we drive the very same road than with the 5 Series once again. It's indeed when you want to have more fun and want to have this, hey, let's go attack feeling, then the 3 Series is for you. Immediately you feel that the 5 Series would be more like a little, little bit more settled and a little bit more calm and so on. So this is the, the first main difference you immediately feel when comparing these two vehicles here. Driving-wise, in the facelift here of the 3 Series, of course, driving hasn't changed that much. What is interesting also, as we recently had the Audi A4 versus Mercedes C-Class comparison, and there I decided for the Audi A4 because of more comfort in the seating ergonomics, and also that the C-Class has the more complicated user interface. And um, here it's a little bit different. Well, the user interface is still a little bit easier in the Audi because of the new OS8 system where I have the climate unit and here also in the screen. However, here it's more that the 3 Series is even more sports focused, whereas the A4 delivers a little bit more comfort then. Um, so would I decide for the Audi also against the 3 Series here in that respect? To me, seating comfort is very, very important because you're sitting in that vehicle and maybe for hours and hours and hours. And that would be a very crucial aspect. And my second crucial aspect is that I want to have a natural steering feeling, which is at the same time progressive. That means not too much steering movement. So it needs to be sporty and precise. Yet I want a natural feeling. And I'm not that satisfied with the steering feelings of the recent BMWs. Strangely, not with the SUVs, you know, especially like X3 and X5, X7 even, especially the bigger SUVs, have a very good steering feeling. And with the smaller, sportier vehicles for BMW, um, I miss a little bit natural feeling. It's not too bad at all, um, but here I would like that I get a little bit more feedback. Um, here in this setup here today, it's sometimes a little bit, you know, it's sometimes a little bit strange. Some it really depends all from vehicle to vehicle. Um, let's see here. Sports mode gives me a little bit more feedback. Comfort mode gets a little bit lighter. So today here in this 3 Series vehicle, it sometimes also depends on the tire choice and so on. It seems better than recently. Yeah, or maybe um, at some point they also do some updates with that. So um, yeah, that seems today indeed better. It's a good surprise actually. But back to the 
C-Class A4 3 Series thing. The steering feel and the ratio and the seat ergonomics is the best in the Audi plus the easiest user interface where you still have manual climate um, dials and so on. And these three things especially would rather drive me towards the Audi. What is actually better in the 3 Series and also in the C-Class that rear wheel drive is the standard here. So and the X drive, the all-wheel drive is an option, but rear wheel drive is always standard. So you either get very nicely out of the corners with the pure rear wheel drive, or when you have the X drive option, the all-wheel drive option, depending on the engine, you still have a rear wheel bias. And that counts for the BMW and also for the C-Class. In the Audi, you just have the permanent quad for all-wheel drive when you, for example, have like an know s4 petrol engine or something um, so quattro ultra then for the smaller engines um, yeah that's the thing so you have to check out the concise engine configuration as for the comfort here with the suspension and so on i would rather not pick anything that is connected with m suspension in this case here in the three series because to me it's not comfortable enough i think it gets too rough especially then with the combination here with the biggest wheels so when you go for something m suspension then at least don't pick the biggest wheels but although we have the adaptive suspension here it's still not that comfortable i feel by the way in the sports mode what we can also do is then also use the shifting lever and go to the sports shifting mode another acceleration let's see if there's a difference Yeah, and you feel that the shifting is even a little bit more aggressive. But wow, how sporty that car feels here and in that corner. Yeah, again, the steering feel, um, especially at higher speeds here, could give me a little bit more feeling. But wow, that engine here also sounds awesome. I mean, 2 liter four cylinder engine, and yes, they also use sound actuator in the interior here because these cars are very well insulated nowadays. But that's an awesome sound indeed, and sound-wise, at least when you handle the throttle, you don't really miss the difference then to the six-cylinder engine. However, the 3 liter six-cylinder is also available here in that M340i model. And the interesting thing is, if you compare this here to the six-cylinder in the 3 series or to the six-cylinder in the 5 series, the fuel economy does not differ that much. So with both, 3 series, 5 series, and both with 2 liter engine and 3 liter, you can score something around 30 mpg, like you know, some 7, 8, 2, 7, 2, 9 approximately liters on one, one kilometers. And the difference or the favor to the smaller engine is maybe maximum a couple of mpg or like half a liter, one and a half liter maximum. So there's not a huge consumption difference. So in this respect, Let's go back to the normal driving mode, also normal shifting mode. So in this respect here, I, I really have to say, you can easily go for the three liter six cylinder because that's the best BMW engine, it's the most fun, without efficiency loss or something. It's of course a question of price. Here in the three series, it's a higher price gap then, you know? So um, for example, in the US, you usually buy the 5 Series with the 3 liter 6 cylinder anyway. There you can also get it rear wheel drive only, for example. Controlling this car here while driving, you know, I do prefer the OS7 in the 5 Series. We still have that. Here the OS8, especially because of the climate unit. And when you try to search things while driving, like, oh, what's the fuel economy or something? You're just taking more time here in the OS8 in this updated infotainment system. The only thing I feel, told you that earlier in the interior part, is more reliable is the wireless Apple CarPlay connection, or then here also with the Android Auto meanwhile. That seems to be more reliable nowadays because before that in the old systems, um, you tend to lose contact with that. So yeah, that's also the reason I'm still a fan of having a, oh, that's a nice old Mercedes W123, uh, one, yeah, one, two, three, yeah, that's correct, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, beautiful vehicle, right, beautiful vehicle. 
Uh, if you want to see, by the way, a vintage uh, 3 Series, like in, uh, like the M3, old versus new comparison, we also have a video of that here on Autogefühl. Just put in the YouTube search Autogefühl M3 and you'll also find it. It's a beautiful video together with AJ. Yeah, visual, visualization wise, it's really cool with the OS8 here, especially here the digital instruments. Um, they look a little bit fresher and also the displays are a little bit crisper, definitely. Here now on the next traffic light, we can test again this accelerating out of a corner and then you will really feel that rear wheel drive here with the vehicle, that's beautiful. There we go. <laughs> that's so nice. I mean, with a two liter four cylinder engine, not being in the sport mode and then just slightly applying more throttle in the corner and you feel like the rear is coming around yeah, that's why rear-wheel driven cars are just so awesome for driver-focused people. Um, peep, no, so what I mean is people who are interested in driver-focused cars. That's what I mean. Like me and you. <laughs> okay, you get what I mean. What I mean. Yeah, that's that's just lovely. Um, that's really the the only downside you have to most of the other engines with the Audi A4 or i5 and so on. Um, yeah. But other than that, um, I'm still in this mid-size segment. Um, the Audi is to me still the car that applies to most of the things I appreciate. That's what I said earlier. And here with this um, brand internal thing, you definitely already feel this is here the sports approach, but you do lose comfort in comparison to the 5 Series. Um, what about you know moving around, maneuvering, parking and so on? Well, this is here 25 centimeters or 10 inches shorter. So it does make a difference, especially in Europe, when you have some smaller gaps while parking and so on. It's not the best car to ease in and out of a parking lot, definitely. There, you know, like a compact SUV or something is has more overview and uh, it's easy to park in and out. Again, in the, in the US, um, as long as you're not in, um, you know, maybe like East Coast, you have to have some narrow areas or something, but especially when you like um, West Coast rather, for example, or other states where you have more space, then it doesn't make a big difference having a 3 or 5 series. And it's more maybe about the price, and I'll talk about the price when we have um, the final verdict for, for, for the day. Um, but one thing that again speaks for the 5 series is you can have that rear axle steering option. And then actually, at least for easing the car in and out somewhere, there is hardly any difference. I always feel when I'm going into my basement garage and I have a bigger vehicle with rear axle steering against a small vehicle without that, I'm just like, you know, more straight in the parking box without correcting back and forth and so on. So that just really helps. But now to something where the 3 Series can play out all of its advantages. So we're trying to do the sports mode and also to the sports shifting mode. And now we have some winding corners. Let's see how the 3 Series performs right here. Of course, now that sport is set up, well, it does give me the bumps <laughs> into my body, yes. But of course, the sport is set up also plays a nice role to have more fun here. The ESP, by the way, the stability control here, it does limit wheel spin. We just experienced that. We had an um, because of the wet road here, we had also some gauges there. Wow, yeah, that is really slippery here. I'm um, still, you know, in the morning, road is a little bit wet. Yeah, so, see here, it's really limiting everything I have. So, that would be a little bit different with the all-wheel drive. But you can, of course, do it, put it to the ESC Sport. However, that's not recommended then for public roads. But the agility here, you know, how the car performs left and right is really, really nice. So it is a lot of fun to drive it. Yeah, but I really wonder, I mean, especially here in the sports mode, I would expect that the stability systems rule a little bit later, actually. But yeah, this is the thing here about the 3 Series. It's a lot of fun to drive indeed. And now to the BMW 5 Series, we also go to the sports mode. And once again, accelerate onto the German Autobahn. We start at the very same speed, 40 kilometers an hour. This one is now here, the six cylinder, is a second quicker. So about five seconds in the acceleration figure instead of six seconds 
with the 330i we had in the 3 Series today. So, let's go. Thirty, one fifty, and now the Tesla Model Y ended our acceleration test. Blame him. Let us keep in lane. <laughs> so, but we can still drive fast in our. Oh, seems so. No, it's picking up the speed there. That Tesla. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> so, one eighty kilometers an hour. Wind noise, of course, also a little bit louder now. But I feel that it would be a little bit, maybe a little bit more silent than the three series. But I wouldn't say that. There is a huge difference in the noise insulation. I also feel really calm and collected here as for the suspension when I'm also doing a lane change at higher speeds. Very nice in control. The steering feeling is not too different either. I think the 3 Series is a little bit more aggressive as for the steering feeling. So, more progressive you could also say. So, it's an S63L. Interesting here. Bulgarian number plate. So um, with the 3 Series I feel they have tweaked the suspension in a way that it does more and here it's more set out to be a little bit calmer which is also fitting to the vehicle. Adaptive suspension in here too, also equipped with winter tires, not the biggest wheels and definitely this suspension is way more forgiving. Okay we don't have the M Sport suspension here but the base suspension setup is definitely sportier in the 3 Series and less sporty in the 5 Series and it definitely gives us more comfort in riding, not only from the suspension but also from the seats. So the seats here just give me more space and especially when you're a little bit taller like I am, then these seats here are giving you way more comfort. So immediately feeling more comfortable and more at home thus in this vehicle here. Really nice ambient lighting. This is also what I do prefer here with the 5 Series, especially when we're going here into that tunnel. As for the sportiness, of course, when you have a little bit more direct feeling to the road, then the 3 Series leads it. Soon we'll also do another run through the winding corners and tell you more about that, how it really behaves in the winding corners. Um, here we also have um, either pure rear wheel drive version, or then if you have an all wheel drive version, then you have an we will buy it all way drive. So this is the same setup than here with the 3 Series. Um, yeah, doesn't make a big difference. I just, especially on the mo on the motorway, feel better in the 5 Series. So the motorway thing is definitely more something for the bigger vehicle here. Longer wheelbase just gives you more calmness on the road. Now getting off the motorway is a really beautiful experience here in that long bend. Yeah, I mean, both drive exceptionally well, definitely, and are a lot of fun. But this 5 Series just combines comfort and sportiness in a better way, I think. All right, let's continue. In this very case here, X-Drive, so the all-wheel drive for here for the 540i. We're just rear-wheel drive for the 340i, and, well, I feel that the ESC systems, they are not ruling you know, as quickly because of that all-wheel drive, of course, so we can bring more traction to the ground, but said that pure rear-wheel drive versions is also where BMW is special, you know. So um, it's cool that it definitely still exists and I wouldn't mind getting a rear-wheel drive only version also here for the 5 Series, definitely. One more time from a traffic light, no one in front of us. Yeah, it's really nice that when you have the all-wheel drive, you still have the rear-wheel bias. And, you know, when you accelerate out of these corners, I would really say the 5 Series feels smoother and the 3 Series just more aggressive. So once again, it confirms that when you want that sporty touch, you would rather go for the 3 Series. And when you appreciate comfort a little bit more than with the 5 Series. Um, about assistance systems, I um, told you that in the 5 Series Brothers A6 review, we also have that here now, if you haven't seen it um, yet. The extra policy, price list and so on is sometimes ridiculous with yeah. all Audi, BMW, Mercedes that you have a full spec vehicle and then maybe you don't have adaptive cruise control, like in this case here. Of course it's available, but you still have to pay extra for it. and. 
this is not really customer friendly, definitely. I always enjoy driving the tunnel here, definitely, and the sound of the six cylinder engine is also really nice. But we heard it earlier that even the four cylinder engine does have nice sound emulation here on the interior, which is still feeling natural and not super artificial or something. And here we also do the change now that we put it to the S shifting mode, and you can also feel or experience how the shifting differs also now from 85 kilometers an hour. Let's go. Turning the RPM higher than. And I'm feeling so calm and collected here, although we are now at around 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour in the bend actually on the motorway. And still it feels like it would be nothing. And that calmness is not transport in the 3 Series. In the 3 Series you rather feel like, yeah, maybe it's more towards a race car and you really want to attack stuff. And here it's, you can drive fast, but you always know like, yeah, okay, I don't have to, you know? So that is the, the difference in driving feeling on the motorway. And um, yeah, I can just enjoy driving fast here without any, um, you know, any much spending of, of more energy or something. It's just effortless how it behaves here on the motorway. And is it really less fun on a motorway? Definitely not. But is it less fun in winding corners? So let's see, one more time, sport mode, sport shifting mode. And here in the uneven road, feel that the suspension is more forgiving. Yeah, once again, we had the M Sport suspension, adaptive suspension with the three series, but still, you know, the suspension here is more this compromise between sportiness and comfort. Really nice now the six cylinder plays out in its, its advantage because you have this sonorous feeling, the sound, and also I don't have to hammer the throttle that much. Steering here, rather comparable, out of the corners, really nice job. Yeah, meanwhile the road is a little bit drier and now the X-Drive still gives us a nice rear rear bias. So <clears throat> definitely more aggressiveness with the 3 Series. Yeah, it feels small and more agile, you do feel that. So I would say you can have more fun with the 3 Series in a sporty way. <sighs> But is it really less fun to me driving the 5 Series around here? Hmm. I understand when someone says the 3 Series is more fun because of the size and the plus in, uh, in, the, in the Agile experience. But that smoothness, together also with the rear axle steering, you know, rear axle steering here fakes kind of a shorter wheelbase because the, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels at lower speeds. Well, and that I have to say, I think I have the same amount of fun here in the 5 Series. So where does it leave us for today? Which one would I take home? Which one would you take home? Please join us in the comment section. This will be so interesting. Looking forward to your feedback. Well, as for me, yeah, definitely tough decision. But let me tell you why I came to my final conclusion for today. First of all, exterior-wise, I think the 3 Series looks a little bit sexier, you know, definitely in the sport pack, yes, but also in the base version, especially since the facelift, it just looks sportier now and it gives you a little bit more dynamic, appealing, more sexiness and not that the 5 Series would look bad, not at all, but just a little bit more dynamic character with the 3 Series. So exterior-wise, I would prefer the 3 Series, but just slightly over the 5 Series. Interiorized the styling, the main difference is of course now the screens. You have this split screen here, and here you have this one curved unit, still two screens, but one unit. It looks a little bit more modern, sleeker, but then you lose the manual climate dials, which we still have in the 5 Series, which I prefer. However, the new software is more complicated, yes, but also has advantages, like a little bit more stable wireless connection, for the CarPlay and Android Auto and also you can bring a map from the CarPlay or Android Auto to the left side instruments. These would be two advantages for example. Here of course in the 5 Series we have a little bit more trunk length. Other than that the front seat is more comfortable with the 5 Series which would be very important to me. I really like driving comfort and to me that would be very very important. Is it Halloween still? Some chainsaw in the back there. <laughs> well, okay, back to the review. 
<laughs> here at the five series, I just have more comfort in the front seat. In the three series, I think, considering the size of the car, it's not enough comfort in the front seat to me. There, for example, an Audi A4 is more suitable, at least to my body, from the seat ergonomics, if you compare the, you know, inside the segment. And this is also what would drive me more towards the 5 Series. In driving, both are a lot of fun. There, the 3 Series has a little bit more fun factor, because, of course, in a you know, shorter wheelbase. However, rear axle steering kind of makes up for the difference that you still have a lot of driving fun. It is a little bit more, let's say, like sovereign on the road, I would call it. And you have a better compromise here between sportiness and comfort, whereas the 3 Series more goes in the sporty direction. Maybe that's what you prefer, but to me, the comfort, seating comfort, and this driving compromise between sportiness and comfort would drive me to the 5 Series. And pricing difference? At the base price in the US and Germany, we have about 10k difference. In the UK, it's not a big difference at all. And here, as they are fully spec, it's also very interesting. 77,000 euros for the 3 Series, 88,000 euros for the 5 Series. So keeping that 10k difference indeed. And I think that's not too big of a gap. So I would rather go 5 Series, a little bit lower spec, Maybe the six-cylinder, rear-wheel drive only. Don't pick all the whistles and builds. Whistles and bil <laughs> builds and whistles. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, instead of a high-spec three series, you know, and then actually you can end up with you know almost equal price or maybe less for a five series. So a high-spec three series is to me more expensive for that size of the vehicle. And interesting also on the used car market, the prices are almost equal. At least in Germany, that's very, very interesting. So, that's an overall to me, I would go with the 5 Series. Which one would you go for? The red pill or the blue stone pill? Tell me in the comments. Also, join us for more interesting comparison episodes. See you next time.